Hi, and welcome to Relationships in Astrology. I'm Armand Diaz in New York. And I'm Margaret Gray in Dublin, Ireland. And today we're talking about 2017, an overview of the year for relationship and astrology. And Margaret, what a year. It certainly is a year, quite an exciting year. And just to say, even though I don't really do numerology, but actually 2016 was a number nine year, apparently, which is the ending. And 2017 is a number one year, which is all about new starts and new beginnings. So quite a lot. It's all about new starts and new beginnings, but Venus is going retrograde in 2017 as she does every 400 or so days. And that's an unusual thing that tends to bring us backwards in relationships a little bit. Yes, it does. And I think there is somewhat of a kind of back and forth this year also, because of course, we had so many changes in 2012. Everybody, of course, heard the end of the Mayan calendar in 2012 or whatever. And of of course, nothing really ended. But in fact, something very important did start, which was a whole change in the structures in our lives, including our relationship structures, um, marriage, contracts, relationships, how we form relationships. And this year is particularly important because the planet Jupiter is aspecting a lot of those points. And so it's really going to reactivate some of those changes in a little bit of a different way. So again, something very new is starting, but also continuation of what really started in 2012. 12. I agree. I think that Jupiter this year is uh, in aspect, and particularly Uranus and Pluto, is uh, bringing home some of those uh, issues that came up. Well, you know, the sort of in a sort of theoretical way, uh, sort of out in the ether, out in the collective. Uh, Jupiter will it'll work in the collective, but I think it, it brings it home. I think we have a lot of uh, opportunities to figure out how all of this is working in our lives, the structure of our lives, the structure of our relationships. And so what do you think about Venus, uh, not Venus, what do you think about Jupiter in Libra, Venus is sign, opposite Uranus in Aries? Well, I think Jupiter tends to expand everything and being in an air sign in Libra, it's really the sign of relationship. And I think what he's really pushing us to do is to consider the whole issue of how we compromise and versus the Uranus and Aries. So I think this year is a very big year in terms of how do we find balance in our relationships between honoring ourselves as individuals, but also compromising and being able to connect with somebody else. So it's finding that balance. I think that's one of the key themes of the year. I think that that is definitely one of the key themes of the year. The Libra Aries axis is once again all lit up and saying, hey, it's about me. I have to, I have to be good for myself if I'm going to be good for anybody else. But then again, if I'm not good for anybody else, it's going to be a little lonely. Um, how do you feel that plays in with Venus retrograde, which it, Venus is retrograde uh, from March 4th until April 15th of 2017? That's a, that's a big chunk of time, and I'm sure we'll be talking about it more. But how do you feel that the, uh, the Uranus, uh, Uranus Jupiter plays in with Venus retrograde? Well, I think that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because whenever the planets go retrograde, they give us a chance to revisit really how we feel about something. So I think it's, it's going to be a good opportunity to revisit what things work in relationships and what things don't work. I mean, what do you think about it? I think a little bit of a push-pull. Actually, uh, Jupiter and Uranus oppose each other just two days before Venus goes retrograde. And I think that on the one hand, you know, Jupiter and Uranus might be ready to sort of leap forward into something new. And then Venus retrograde kind of pulls back a little bit and says, well, what do we really think about this? So I think that there might be that kind of stop-start message there, uh, spe specifically in the springtime. And then as time goes on, we'll probably, uh, probably get moving a little bit more forward. I think it's going to be an interesting year because it really kind of starts off in February with the eclipse season. And of course, that's two seasons a year. We have eclipses. And this particular one starts with the full moon in Leo. So it's very much heart centered. And interestingly, the end of the eclipse season, which is in August, ends with a new moon in Leo. So it almost feels like they're like bookends, that it's really that heart energy that has been opened up, that has been stimulated possibly throughout most of the year in relationships, which is quite a good way to, to start and end the year. And then I think then we have, of course, as you mentioned, the Jupiter Uranus, which is in March. That's kind of the first time it really happens this in 2017. So that feels like quite a hot spot. 
and then it gets really we're asked to manifest it really put it into practice with the with the saturn transit then in may and then it happens again in august and then in november so it feels like there's really those two major periods in time which are particularly active for relationships that are worth kind of keeping an eye out yeah th those would be the times and I, I think it is kind of sort of in the springtime or in the early part of the year and then uh, then sort of again bookending at the end of the year but those eclipses at a little bit different angle the eclipses hitting uh, as they do in august and uh and february uh and and maybe setting the tone i think that the uh, leo full moon eclipse uh is a very big deal that's a that's a party moon you know full moon and leo go out and have some fun but it could also, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of charge to that. There's a little sort of a little sexual energy that's going to be floating around in the air. And then the eclipse comes in, and I think it's a little bit more of like, you know, okay, are you, are you coming from the heart or are you coming from other areas? And, uh, and it's, it's all good as long as you know what it is you're doing. And I think that that liable to be a big theme. And it, it may take until the August eclipse to sort of sort it all out. I, I totally agree with you. And I think also not forgetting that, of course, we've got Mercury retrograde as we do every year. We have different times when it's retrograde. And just to always keep that in mind because it kind of sneaks up on us and sometimes it makes communication a little bit more tricky. We have to be more careful. And of course, the new year starts 2017 with Mercury retrograde and it goes on till January 8th. And then there's another retrograde early in April 9th to May 3rd. And then um, the following December 3rd to the 22nd. So just to keep those times in mind in terms of um, communication, particularly when there's so many other energies that are active that, you know, can really interfere generally with it. Yeah, I think, you know, every year has its, every year has its stuff, you know, <laughs> and uh, I feel that, that this year there's going to be a lot of activity. There's a lot of activity at the personal level, a lot of activity for relationships, a lot of, and a lot of other stuff that we'll each individually be sorting out as well. And, you know, we only have so much energy to go around sometimes, and sometimes it can't be all about relationship, or, you know, sometimes we're going to need to look at other things as well. And, uh, and there could be a little bit of a, a little tension there as well. Yes, and I think always to keep in mind balance. I think with Jupiter and Libra, it's all about balance and fairness. They're, they're really the kind of the key themes. And I think if ever, you know, we're feeling stuck in relationships this coming year, to really just sit back for a moment and just consider, is this fair? Is it balanced? You know, is the rest of my life balanced? Is the relationship balanced? And I think once we keep that in mind, it, it might help us navigate through this territory. Let's hope so. <laughs> Absolutely. And I hope it's a wonderful year for everyone. And we'll see everyone in 2017. Take Happy care, Armand. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.